Donald Price managed to try himself at many jobs during his long life. But now, having turned 70, he was no longer the desperate adventurer he once used to be. As a lonely old man, Mr. Price faced more and more problems with his health. What bothered him the most was his back pain, which was often so bad that he couldn't even sleep or rest. Fortunately, it only got so bad when the seasons changed, especially in spring and fall. Mr. Price's neighbors had almost completely forgotten that he used to have a family once, and a good one too. It just so happened that the son of Charlotte and Donald Price was the complete opposite of his parents and moved to the big city immediately after his high school graduation. The metropolis beckoned the young man like a lighthouse, which in foggy weather attracts sailors who have gone astray. Anthony Price dreamed of big money and incredible opportunities, which became the goal of his life. Frankly speaking, Donald was initially against his son moving to New York. Unfortunately, his opinion wasn't enough for Anthony to give up on his dream and come home. The most interesting thing was that Mr. Price knew virtually nothing about his son's life in the big city. Anthony rarely called his parents, so the couple could only assume that he was having a hard time. Mr. Price knew that his son would never complain or ask for help. He was a very proud young man, and the fight that he had with his father on the day that he left home made him determined not to turn to his dad for help. Anthony died in a car accident. This news shocked Charlotte and Donald to the core. At first, the couple didn't even believe the police officer who delivered this terrible news. As it turned out, Anthony worked several jobs at once, and one of them was a taxi driver. Since no alcohol was found in the man's blood, it was his exhaustion that was determined to have caused the accident. Simply put, Anthony fell asleep at the wheel and drove into the oncoming lane, where he crashed head-on into a truck. Her son's death had a detrimental effect on Charlotte's health, which was poor to begin with, and eventually, the woman had a massive heart attack. Of course, the doctors did everything they could to save the woman, but unfortunately, they couldn't do it. Then came the most difficult time in Donald's life. Having first lost his son and then his beloved wife a month later, he was left all alone in this world. At some point, the man even started drinking, which couldn't but have a negative effect on his quality of life. Every week, Donald came to the cemetery to visit the graves of his wife and son. The old man talked to them for a long time, trying to share his heartache and feelings with them. Donald was distraught with grief, and he was confident that he would soon join his wife and son in the afterlife. It's hard to say how this sad story would have ended if it weren't for the strange squeaking sound that the man heard one day coming from the roadside bushes as he was on his way home from the cemetery. The man stopped and listened. Did someone throw a kitten out? Or am I imagining things? Donald thought. But when he heard the sound again, he decided to determine its source. Having walked up to the bushes, Donald carefully parted the branches and saw a puppy curled up into a ball. The pitch black cutie looked at the stranger and bristling the fur on his back, yelped softly. Wow, you're brave, aren't you? I bet you'll make a great guard. Mr. Price smiled and carefully picked up the puppy. The little animal immediately calmed down and licked Donald's thumb as if to show his gratitude. How could I leave you here alone? You'll freeze to death or die of hunger, the old man whispered sadly. The man always loved animals and tried to help them in every way he could. He bought bones from a butcher shop to feed stray dogs and kibble to give to stray cats. Having decided to keep the puppy, Donald didn't even suspect that very soon, the puppy would turn out to be much more than just a pet for him. He would become the man's best friend. The old man named the puppy Teddy, after one of his favorite cartoon characters. At first, the puppy gave Donald a lot of trouble because he always wanted to chew on something. Old shoes, a mop handle, and a ping pong ball have all become Teddy's favorite toys. Time passed making adjustments to the lives of the heroes of this story. From a small, trembling puppy, Teddy turned into a tall and handsome adult dog. Even though he wasn't purebred, people on the street still praised his appearance. 
For the first time in years, Donald felt happy. Teddy became the meaning of his master's life, which previously used to be his family. At this point, the elderly man didn't even realize it as he started helping homeless animals. Now, the man spent about half of his income on food for his furry friends, as well as on helping shelters and vet clinics. Since he needed more money with each passing day, Donald Price decided that it was time to find a new job. Until then, the old man had worked the night shift at a parking lot for several months. But after a couple of encounters with robbers, he realized that he was too old for that job. Having picked up the local weekly paper, Mr. Price opened it to the last page and started going through the job ads. Teddy was lying in his favorite spot, at the feet of his master, and listening attentively to what his owner had to say. So, garbage truck driver? No, that's not for me. A loader in a construction materials store? N no, not with my back problems. Mr. Price muttered to himself, methodically studying the advertisements. He looked at Teddy from time to time, and the dog wagged his tail in response, as if to say, Take your time, you'll find something better. Mr. Price was about to put the paper aside, when he saw a very strange advertisement. Looking for an elderly man to work as a manny. For additional information, please call the phone number below. Donald read the interesting job post aloud. At the word Manny, Teddy pricked up his ears and barked loudly. Oh, you think so too? I wonder what exactly this job implies. Do I need to have teaching experience? But I don't have any. Donald pondered, frowning his brows thoughtfully. The man was confused by the strange word Manny. It sounded weird to Mr. Price's ear, being one of those words that modern youth came up with. Having finally gathered his courage, the man decided to call the number from the ad and find out everything he needed to know about this job. Donald's call was answered by a young woman who didn't beat around the bush and immediately offered to meet and discuss the details. Moreover, the stranger was willing to come to Mr. Price's house in an hour. Let's meet in the city park instead, shall we? I'm going to take my dog for a walk there anyway, and it will probably be more convenient for you, the old man suggested. The woman on the other end of the line was happy to agree, causing the old man to breathe a sigh of relief. Donald was ashamed of his living conditions and didn't want some stranger to see his home. Dressed in his best suit, the man put a leash on Teddy and went to the city park. As it turned out, the woman was already waiting for him at the entrance. She held out her hand for a shake and immediately got down to business. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Monica Stone. Price, Donald Price, miss, the man replied, slightly embarrassed. The old man's shyness was explained by the fact that his potential employer looked like a real business lady. The woman was a little over 30, and her eyes shone with confidence and intelligence. A little further away, Donald saw a parked Dodge SUV, which apparently belonged to Monica Stone. Since the woman had very little free time, she immediately got to the point. As I said, my son needs a manny. He is seven years old. Kevin's father died eight months before his birth. Since I spent all my free time at work, my mother looked after the boy for a long time, Monica shared. So, what's the problem? Why did you need my help? Mr. Price asked, patting Teddy on the withers. Monica sighed sadly and, ignoring the tears in the corner of her eyes, continued. My mother died a year ago. She had a heart attack. The worst thing was that it all happened right in front of Kevin. They were playing hide-and-seek at the time. So that happened. Basically, my son withdrew into himself and got paralyzed from the waist down. The paralysis is temporary and was caused by mental trauma, a peculiar reaction of the body to the shock of the boy's experience. David turned pale. The old man had already figured out why Monica needed his services. The unfortunate woman wanted to pull the boy out of his depression and help him deal with the consequences of the stress he experienced. Monica continued to speak and confirmed Donald's assumption. If it were a physical injury, I would have hired a nurse or a caregiver, but Kevin's problem is a mental one. Money is not an issue as long as you can help my son. So, what do you say? Will you take the job? Monica Stone asked. Donald took a long look at the woman after which he blotted the sweat on his forehead with a handkerchief and agreed to take the job. 
the old man knew that he wasn't doing it as much for the money as to help the little boy. The next day, he was supposed to come to Monica's house to get to work. Saying goodbye to the young woman, Donald released Teddy from the leash so he could have some fun running after the pigeons and squirrels. The old man knew that from then on, he would have very little time for walking his dog, since the job he just took was extremely important. Mr. Price spent the rest of the day reading up on teaching techniques and psychology. He read whatever information he could find online. The old man wanted to be fully armed and to know at least the basic rules when dealing with traumatized children. Eventually, all the methods, techniques, and tricks that David was trying to cram into one day got mixed up in his head, so he simply gave up and went to bed. The next morning, he found himself standing at the door of the two-story mansion, located on the corner of Park Street. Monica was waiting for his arrival and opened the door at the first knock. Smiling at the old man, the business lady took the guest to meet her son. Kevin turned out to be a thin boy with big gray eyes and dimples on his cheeks. Sitting in a wheelchair, the boy watched the stranger with interest. His mother introduced David as the boy's Manny. Hi, Kevin. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun together. What do you think? The old man asked and extended his hand to the boy. The boy smiled and replied softly. Good morning, sir. I sure hope you're right. Monica considered her son's answer a good sign, and having wished the new Manny good luck, started getting ready for work. Donald decided to begin their day with the conversation, so he talked to the boy a little about himself. When the old man mentioned Teddy, a joyful spark appeared in the boy's eyes. Do you really have a dog? Kevin asked, hopefully. Of course I do. Why would I lie to you? His name is Teddy and he's four years old. He's a rather big dog, 130 pounds. If you want, I can take you to see him sometime. The mere thought that he would get to take such a big and kind dog out for a walk improved Kevin's mood greatly. The boy had long dreamed of having his own pet, but his mother was in no hurry to fulfill this request because of his condition. A little later, Donald read a couple of stories to Kevin after which they took out the building blocks and started making a house. From the first minutes they spent together, the old man experienced an inexplicable sympathy for the boy, who reminded him of his late son. Mr. Price felt that spending time with the boy filled him with inner energy and joy, a feeling only those who have kiddos or grandkiddos could understand. Two weeks passed quickly. As per Kevin's request, Donald took him to the park, where he introduced him to Kevin. As it turned out, the dog was very fond of children. Trying to keep up with the dog in his wheelchair, the boy laughed merrily and seemed to even forget that he couldn't walk. After such walks, the boy's cheeks turned pink and his appetite was great. Monica couldn't help but notice the positive changes in her son's behavior. Kevin became more talkative and cheerful, which made him look like a little angel who was stuck in a wheelchair at the whims of cruel fate. Over time, taking Teddy for a walk in the park became an integral part of the program developed by Donald Price. The old man felt in his heart that the boy would soon be ready to take his first independent step. All he needed was a little push, something to awaken his reflexes that seemed to have frozen temporarily. If only Donald could have known that the push would happen, and rather soon. Unfortunately, it would be just as painful as the one that caused the paralysis. It all started with the fact that Donald decided to show Kevin his home. The old man had been collecting baseball cards for a long time, and over the years of painstaking searches, he managed to get some very rare ones in his collection. Kevin really wanted to see those cars, since he was always interested in baseball. Of course, before taking the boy to his place, the man cleaned the house and polished everything to a mirror shine. The weather was hot, and Mr. Price had been feeling unwell since the morning. Ignoring the intensifying headache, the man left the boy alone with Teddy while he went out onto the porch. At one point, his blood pressure must have gone up so high that Mr. Price started feeling nauseous. Unfortunately, the old man fainted and couldn't remember what happened next. Kevin was just about to show the old man one of his favorite baseball cards when he saw him lying on the front steps. At that moment, the boy felt such a strong adrenaline rush 
that he literally jumped out of his wheelchair and ran up to the old man. Mr. Price, M Mr. Price, what's going on with you? The boy screamed with tears in his eyes. Realizing that he needed to do something, Kevin first called an ambulance and then his mother. It just so happened that Monica arrived before the doctors and was the first one to help the elderly man. Fortunately, everything worked out well. Mr. Price didn't have a heart attack, but a heat stroke. Only when the old man came to his senses did Monica realize that her son was walking on his own two feet and behaving as if he had never used a wheelchair a day in his life. Embracing her son, she involuntarily shifted her gaze to the wall and saw a strange photo hanging in the hallway. Dear Lord, no, that, that can't be, flashed through the woman's head. Monica's surprise was understandable for one very simple reason. Pictured in the photograph was Kevin's biological father. Many years ago, Monica and Anthony had a passionate relationship that ended in a painful breakup. At that time, Monica was just starting to work on her career and wasn't rich yet. Unfortunately, the woman found out that she was pregnant only after the death of her ex-boyfriend. Monica had to go through a lot before she achieved success and could provide her son with everything he needed. And now, as she helped Mr. Price get up, the woman realized that all this time, her son was actually spending time with his own grandfather. When Monica told Donald about it, he couldn't hold back his tears. Not only did he help the boy walk again, but he also found his grandson. Hugging Monica and Kevin, the man mentally thanked heaven for help and the opportunity to live the rest of his life as a beloved grandfather and not a lonely and miserable old man.